All right, so let's take a look at the tetrahedral interstitial site. And what we want to do is we want to figure out how big that space is in amongst these four uh, anions, right? The space that my finger's in, if you will. How big is that? How big of, an, of a sphere could I fit in there? It's a little easier to see perhaps like with a simple cubic one. You know, you can see that space in there is pretty big. Uh, how big is it? We can calculate it because there's some nice geometry here with this uh, cube. It's a little bit easier, but tetrahedral is, is a little harder. Um, but you'll remember from another video uh, that when I introduced the tetrahedral site, um, if, you, if you don't know it, take a look at the, the video. Um, we can use a cube to, to give us a, a really nice starting point for understanding the geometry. And I'm going to show you that same approach right here. So really quickly, again, look at the other video if you um, are having trouble keeping up with, with this. Um, the way of visualizing the tetrahedral site within a cube. I'm just drawing a cube here really quickly, and I'm going to position a tetrahedral site there. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four atoms in there, and I'll go ahead and I'll put a central atom in, and I'm going to draw the direction of contact between them really quickly. So I've created a nice little tetrahedral site there. Uh, and then the other thing I can do is I can draw a little line uh, across the bottom face diagonal, and I can draw a vertical line straight down there to make a little right triangle that's going to be useful to us. Uh, and, and so that is a tetrahedral site. Now, it's a little bit difficult, perhaps, to see um, how that is and how we're going to size things up here. So I'm going to try my best to sketch something for you here. What, what if I drew, um, that's marginally better, if I drew a tetrahedral site and so what I'm trying to draw for you here is um, a little four-sided uh, triangular-faced um, pyramid. Uh, tri uh, okay, so, so that's, that's if you put atoms in each corner, that's why we call this the tetrahedral site. Okay, so you know if I had atoms here, here, and here, there's four of them, that's the tetrahedral site. That's what I've drawn within the cube. We're just viewing it another way as, as the, only the tetrahedral site. And so... What you have to appreciate is if I drew these atoms in their full size, they would be touching one another like this. So the three that you're sort of seeing facing you would be this. There's 60 degrees between them. They're touching. These ones are touching. These are touching. These are touching. Okay. Um, and that's what I've tried to draw there. If I kind of drew it in um, solid, it would look like that. And then this back one here. Um, is also actually touching those, and it's just kind of hidden by the ones in the front. I'm not an artist, but what I'm trying to show you is where these are positioned and the fact that they're touching one another um, the way I've tried to draw with these blue um, circles. And so the, the, the final thing to, to figure out is, well, what if we peered inside there, right? Because we, we said that the cation or the whatever's in the middle of this, that space in between is right in there. How big uh, would an atom be that could just perfectly fit in there? You know, would it be as small as I've drawn? Would it be a little bit bigger? Would it be even, even bigger? You know, how, how big would that be? Again, in the center of a cube, it's actually really big. Um, in the center of tetrahedral site, it's a lot smaller, but we, we got to quantify exactly how big that is, and we're going to do that right now. Um, so the first thing to appreciate is this, that this line here is made up uh, of an anion radius, okay? The anion, this thing here is, is touching, um, well, not halfway, but it's touching at some position here, some distance out with the cation, okay? And so that's the radius of the anion plus the radius of the cation, all right? That's the first thing to wrap your head around. The next is, you remember that, whoops, sorry about that, um, that this anion is touching this anion, okay? It's like this one and this one. These two are, are touching. That distance there would be twice the anion radius, which means that from here to the center, that is this length here, is 
the anion radius, Ra. And now that distance continues out, but just the solid gray part is Ra. <clears throat> so again, like we did before, I could draw that for you. And where is it? There it is. There we go. Okay. Um, this time, uh, what we'd like to do is look at this angle here. I'll call it theta. And as you recall uh, from the tetrahedral video earlier, uh, that's root two, and that will be one. So we could work out that angle theta uh, by saying, well, look, we know that tan theta is equal to one over root two. So theta is tan inverse of one over root two, which equals, uh, I was looking at it earlier, uh, root two, okay, square root of two, one over that, tan inverse, it's 35.3 degrees. All right, so that's fantastic. Um, and we know, uh, as I said, that this is the anion radius this length here is the cation radius plus the anion radius. So we have basically everything we need now to, to figure this out. And so I'm going to go and I'm just going to say, look, cos of theta is equal to Ra over Rc plus Ra. Okay, and then I could multiply across. I could say Rc plus Ra. cos theta equals Ra. Everything's looking good. Nothing fancy here, right? Nothing up my sleeves. This is just some simple manipulation. Um, and then I could go ahead and I could divide both sides by Ra. Uh, you'll see why in a moment. So then we'd have, um, we'd have Rc over Ra uh, plus 1 cos theta equals 1, okay, and then I didn't leave myself enough room, so if you permit me, I'll just continue over here. Um, we could then say, well, <clears throat> um, so that's uh, Rc over Ra cos theta plus cos theta equals 1, just to be absolutely clear, make sure I don't make a silly mistake, Rc over Ra then equals well, 1 minus cos theta, right, over cos theta. Um, and that's, so that's the RC to RA ratio. That's how big the cation can be that will occupy in, you know, in a fraction, as a fraction of the anion radius, uh, where, where theta, we said, was 35.3. So let's just figure that out. So 35.3. Uh, we'll do uh, cos of that and one, swap those, so one minus uh, cos theta and then cos theta uh, divide and that equals 0 0.225, 0 0.225. And so that is the answer that the cation can be about 23 percent the size of the anion to fit into that interstitial site perfectly. And so that's the RC to RA ratio for the tetrahedral interstitial site. Thanks.